Hello everybody, this is Dan here from Chirp ET. This is part two of the first annual Chirp Festival held at Flaters in Oakham, Wisconsin in between the Chippewa and the Flambeau River. So John and I were out there hanging out and just having a really good time busting up some ice here in the river. Um, and then we came to find out that uh, one of the snowmobiles decided that they were going to go over there and do some water skipping and unfortunately they did not make it. And this video is going to focus on getting this guy out of that water. So we heard about him being in the water like that. We decided to venture down and suggest that we could provide some assistance. You're going to see more about this here in a little bit. But this is a brand new 2023 Polaris XCR. This is sad that this occurred. He suggested a little bit later what happened is, is some water got on the clutches and the clutches started to spin and he couldn't get out. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but that is the story. And if you notice here, we've been busting up ice, John and I, um, and that ice has been floating down here. And that's going to create some havoc as we move along. Now he's trying to take oh, that goodness, rope and he actually here. puts it around. Over on the left hand side there you can see those icebergs starting to float down. But he's taking this rope and he put it around his handlebars to try to keep the snowmobile from going down river. So what could happen is that current, because it's moving so fast, could push it down underneath the ice and that could create some issues. Um, but he's standing on that snowmobile right there. Careful, I was going to get out fall, and yeah. provide him a rope and try to pull things up. But as you're going to see, that did not work out as more and more ice started to come down that river and create problems as to how we were going to be able to pull that snowmobile back up through that ice. So we did have the rhino straps along with us. I absolutely love these things. They work fairly well. I uh, haven't had any issues with those so far. I pulled out a couple of four-wheelers, side-by-side, snowmobiles. Um, and we actually pulled the Sherpa out with those babies. Now look at that chunk of ice. That ice is probably 12 to 18 inches thick. And look at he jumped right up on top of that iceberg and just floating there uh, while that snowmobile gets covered up with that ice. So eventually what we did do, and this took quite a while, is we tried to break the ice down river a little bit to allow some of those icebergs to flow away. Uh, it worked a little bit. It didn't work a little bit. It was just a big pain in the butt. So I was having difficulties communicating with him and understanding what the heck he actually wanted us to do. We sat there and just waited for a while until they got things organized. It was a little chilly out there because I only had a little sweater on there. Um, so I went back in the Sherp and just proceeded to watch the fun. Are you going out there? Let's close the door. Yeah, let's close the door. So we pulled up to get a little bit closer so we could attach a rope to that rope that they had attached to the handlebars, which honestly would not work there? because if you pulled on that, it's not going to pull it up. It had to be on the skis. More about that a little bit later. I think you should. So again, I can't understand what the heck he's saying i'm sure he's freezing his butt off because that water is ice cold and as he proceeds to do whatever he was going to do has to move that helmet a little bit i think he's about to take another drink is watch this closely watch this closely don't have a hook. Um, so again, the water here, I'm guessing, is about four, four or five feet deep. Somewhere around there. Here he comes. Oop! <laughs> Sorry about that. Don't mean to snicker. That water has got to be cold. Uh, as you can see, it's been snowing out all day long. It's it's right around 30 degrees, maybe a little bit warmer than that, but it's chilly. And when you have water on you like that, it gets cold. 
Most good snowmobile suits, again, are waterproof, so it might have helped out a little bit, but I guarantee you his boots are full of water. The longer we wait, the more that ice continues to build up over and over there. again on top of that sled. What he was trying to get us to do is to bust up the ice on the opposite side and then allow those icebergs to flow past. But again, this ice is thick and a Sherp does ride on ice as much as a human, so it, it really doesn't break it that easily, so it's really hard to have to do that. Well, maybe this is a lesson learned, but I wouldn't walk on those icebergs of floating like that because that's probably not a smart thing to do. If you to try to break that, then you have to move that helmet. And I'm going to have to drive over that hose, so you're going to have to go, or the, go on this side. There you go. Again, a little bit more gutsy than I am. I wouldn't walk out in that iceberg like that because it could rock very easily and that current is moving things around. What they were trying to do is take that hook and be able to hook that on the ski to be able to pull it up on top of the ice. I believe that's what they were trying to do, but it was very difficult to hear them. And it had to be cold, cold, cold. I honestly don't even know right now if there's even a rope attached to that snowmobile. Don't know. Don't know. But I think what they're attempting to do right here is to hook it to those skis. Oh no, oh no. We got a number two person down and that sweatshirt is soaking wet. I cannot imagine how cold that is. Knocks the wind right out of you. But he was a trooper. He was cold as an all get out. We attempted to try to get him into the Sherp. But honestly, we were watching the action here, and I have no idea where that gentleman went. Uh, trying to get out some of that. We never wet in the back of the Sherp, and the Sherp was nice and warm. We had plenty of heaters going. There was no issues at all. We can get you in the back if you want. Oh, fucking <laughs> I agree. I don't understand. Do they want us to try to pull or no? Or what? Well, obviously, the problem is like getting it up over the ice. You yep. Know, yeah. The ski. Yeah. I, I, I could try, but I don't want to hit your sled. I. Okay. But you still got to go up over the ice here. We get that ice so I can get you. We'll grab the So again, what we're attempting to do is to break up the ice such that those icebergs can go a little bit farther down so it's not, the icebergs are not over the top of the snowmobiles. Again, that's not an easy thing to do because even though the Sherp is pretty big, uh, it, it, it doesn't break through the ice very easily. Those tires are so wide it really distributes the weight. But I kind of enjoy this part, right? When So when you go out on those icebergs and you're floating up on top of it, it's almost like you're able to walk on it. When you back up, it is definitely a weird feeling because the back tires are up in the air and the front end goes down. And sometimes the water actually even come up to the windshield. Now, it didn't happen in this particular case, but it does happen sometimes. <laughs> Again, doing our best to bust up that ice as best we can, but it's very hard to do so. I'm starting to get so used to the Sherp, this seems to be almost normal, but it is absolutely crazy about walking across those icebergs. Let me know if you like this video. Please hit that uh, subscribe and like button. Throw some comments out there. I can answer any questions you may have. 
So as you can kind of see there, uh, is he's holding on to that rope. That snowmobile is fairly close, and obviously I don't want to try to drive over the damn thing, or I could bust the windshield, bust the hood, something like that. So I'm really being careful, and even some of these icebergs, as I drive on them, you know, it's going to go up in the air a little bit. I don't want it to come down and whack on top of the snowmobile. And honestly, I believe that we were successful in not damaging anything as we were busting up this ice around the sled. So John came down and got in the picture too, and he was also assisting, as you're going to see here in a little bit, uh, us trying to break those ice chunks up and then hopefully let it go down and break up some more ice to let it go down. But one thing that was happening is as we're busting up this ice, that snowmobile is being pushed down river with the current. Um, so it kind of didn't really help, and honestly, a whole hell of a lot. I'm not sure what you want me to do. I And there we go, we got John in the picture also trying to break up this ice also. One of the things that happens is, is when you do enter into the water, if there's a big iceberg right there and you dive in and you hit your bumper or you hit the door of the front of the Sherp, there is definitely some dangerous things that could happen. Uh, um, John had the front of his door bend in, I would guess, three, four inches. We were able to go back to his place and bend it out with a bottle jack and a couple of two by fours or two by sixes, I don't remember what the heck they were, and we were able to bend it out again. Uh, I have not had that happen. I believe he's had it happen a couple of times. But that's just part of driving the Sherp. It's not like you use this darn thing and nothing breaks. I think you spend honestly as much time fixing things as you do driving. If you're having fun, that is, and I definitely have some fun and I use it to its full capabilities. At some point in this adventure, when I have absolutely no idea when it occurred, my right rear driver's side tire uh, broke the beadlock, so I had to take the damn tire off and um, re-caulk it and all that. I'll put a link to the description below on how you do that, um, but I did not capture that fixing it this time. Julie and I, I think, actually had a record with that. I think we were done... From start to finish in about two hours getting that thing fixed, so that was pretty cool. And John sitting out there right now is he is on broken ice, so those are busted up icebergs that are down there that he is just sitting there and floating on. <laughs> I 
So John drove around and tried to break up some more ice so we could get a little bit clearer view and a way to pull that chirp out without pulling it up through the icebergs. So we futzed over there for a little while. I agree. You want to tie this on or not? Fucking day, man. Hey, how about we put that your rope on this and then you tie it to there? the kid that fell in. You know, if we even pull it so it's closer to the edge of the ice, then maybe they can grab one of the skis and we can try and pull it up. Or hook on one of so the skis. So to your point, what we should be doing is we should be hooking it onto the ski and onto the handle. Yes, but we didn't do that. You're going to have to hook that on the ski to get that up. The handlebars ain't going to work. So I'm not sure what kind of snowmobile this is, but I believe that we have a $20,000 brand new snowmobile that is now in the lake as a result of poor water skipping. Don't be like that. 
punch it. See, now he's screwed. He can't, he's going to have to drive over that snowmobile unless I pull him out. That's what, that's what I was talking about. Unless you can get a little more parallel. Can't, because of the, par this, the current. I have to pull him out. No, look, he's going this way. The snowmobile's right there. But if he backs up right now. Maybe. That shocks me. See, it keeps going down. The snowmobile does. It's farther down than what it was before. They're going to lose it all the way underneath the ice. You're going to have to do a way better knot than that. I want to do it so I can pull it down and tie it. That is not, no. I can get it to stay there, but don't do it on the edge. It's just going to slide right off. Yeah, you think of that? Yes. How are we going to get that out, though? We'll deal with it when we deal with <laughs> All it. All right, Milwaukee. Nice. Right. Okay, let's see if we can get that Back up. I can't. I gotta move the strap. Oh, Let us pull. Look out, move out of the way. Keep, I would keep going. Get it so you can get it close to the edge of the ice. So what Julie was referring to was me talking about potentially buying an XCR 850 Polaris. But I don't think I'd buy one that went under the water.
We got a 2023 Polaris XCR 850 that unfortunately didn't make it water skipping. Two Sherps were able to pull them out. Don't buy that one. Julie's on her first shirt. Oh. What do you think, Julie? I love it. Fun. Look at what we are experiencing right now. Unbelievable. I don't know. How, 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 that's more than 12 inches, that ice. Wow. Yeah, that's good. So we're stuck. Tires, they're wiggling and we're not moving. So after we were able to get done with that little snowmobile adventure there, I was finally able to get out there and give some people some rides. That's what we were originally intending to do. So here's some of that action. I want to go rescue people with this. I, so Julie and I went and we tried to find somebody, unfortunately, that died on the Wisconsin River. But I want to go, my goal is, is I want to go out and rescue people. Somebody is stranded somewhere and I want to go save them. Wow. So you did that today. <laughs> yeah, I've done it a few times. Yeah, but nothing that's not what I'm thinking about. Look at what we're doing. This is crazy. This is just, this is wrong. It's just, this, nothing I does know. this, huh? I know. <laughs> Unbelievable. How deep do you think it is right here? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing does this stuff! What is it weigh? Like 1,700 pounds? 2,800. Still pretty light. So we are sitting on an iceberg right now. Absolute <laughs> iceberg. <laughs> Not a lot of things do this, huh? No. I've never been enough of like this before. This is too cool. Just driving. Yeah, do you frost it? No. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my foot stepped up. There we go. Go right over top. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> You're back here again. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is the stuff to me that matters. I should get Julie down here tape it. It's awesome. Yeah, kind of be careful with it when you open up. <laughs> that one can do this! <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> this is just insane! Crazy. Absolutely insane. I gotta take
can see where you guys are hanging around down here a lot more. Here, watch this. This is pretty neat, neat to me. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That was floating. This video lasted a little bit longer than I anticipated, but I still have some footage remaining, so there will be a part three coming out. It's got some more rides to share with you, and also there was a paraglider that was out on the ice that we captured when we were in Hokum, believe it or not. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please throw some comments out there. Take care, everyone. Special thanks to Joe from Platers. Appreciate the hospitality. John, I had a blast. Can't wait for next year. Did I? Yeah. Got a little watery off.